In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the Hass.io add-on store as well as the Home Assistant Community Store to add to your Home Assistant instance and improve functionality. Coming up on Suburban Nerd. Hey, Suburban Nerd here, putting the smart in smart home. Thanks so much for joining me. If you find this video informative or helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Today, I'm going to be introducing part three of my Home Assistant Starter series. In the first two parts, I discussed what Home Assistant is, and then I did an installation and basic configuration. This time, I'm going to be using the Hass.io add-on store, as well as other sources, to add plugins to improve the Home Assistant experience. This video also has a companion post over at my blog, SuburbanNerd.com. You can follow along there, and while you're there, go ahead and sign up for the newsletter. Subscribers will get regular updates, exclusive content, and special offers. Join today for a free gift. If you've seen my previous videos or read the companion posts, you would know that the Hass.io add-on store is a component of the Hass.io installation of Home Assistant. This is where you can get a lot of the most popular integrations easily and quickly set up within Home Assistant. I'll be showing you five add-ons I recommend to get started in Home Assistant. Now these will all be coming from the official add-on store and they'll just be for working with in-home assistant in basic configurations and such. I'll get to things like remote access and Node-RED in later videos. And one word of advice, before you make any changes, especially within the configuration of Home Assistant, you're going to want to take a snapshot. That's the little backup file that copies everything you've got already configured. Believe me. I am speaking from experience here, you need to do that. And here we are in the Hass.io add-on store. And the first thing we're going to install is Samba Share. Samba Share allows Linux-based devices such as your Home Assistant configured Raspberry Pi to share their files over the network with Windows and Mac OS X machines. So the first thing we do is we install it from the Hass.io add-on store. I've already got that set up. And then we go down into the configurations. Now every add-on is going to have a configuration page like this so you want to read it first. So here's the configuration. Workgroup you can leave blank username you can make it whatever you want just remember this is not going to be a home assistant username so it's not going to have any access within the application itself it's just for remoting in from the back end from a, another computer password you can set here of course you're going to use a strong password you know like i keep recommending Interface is a more advanced option, as you can see. It lets Sama know what it should be listening for, or if it should be listening. Allow hosts. Now you can see that these are not specific hosts, but rather subnets. And you can put a specific host in here. What this really does is it's more for filtering out unwanted traffic. So basically, if you only want a specific computer on your network, you would delete all of these and just put in the IP address of that one machine. Veto files are files that do not appear when you log into the Samba share from another computer. So you can put in the IP address or the name, which in my case is Hass.io, but I find it easier to put in the IP address. For some odd reason, my network gets a little cranky when you try to put in the name. Uh, and what you want to do is before you put in your, these login credentials that you created previously, you want to tell it you're looking on the Hass.io machine. Putting in my credentials. Now I can tell it to remember my credentials, but I flush my cache after every session, so it's not really going to do much. And there we go. We have the main directory within your Home Assistant configured Raspberry Pi. And this is your config file. This is where you're gonna do most of your work. You also have SSL for SSL certificates. We'll go into that later. And 
now you see the file tree within the config folder and you can see these don't have any default application set you can use basically any text editor but windows doesn't necessarily re recognize yaml but i like to open it with notepad plus plus i have to look for it here you can also download things like visual studio code these are all free And there you go. You can now go in and edit any of these files. And the next add-on we're gonna look at is Configurator. And what Configurator allows you to do is view the config folder within Home Assistant itself. It's a browser-based text editor. Now, you only see the config folder instead of the entire file structure for Home Assistant but this is still pretty useful when it comes to making quick and easy edits within the configuration files. You know, you can see the features. It lets you easily upload and download straight into the config folder. It lets you edit within it. It also has a feature where if you're typing in bad code, it lets you know, I have no idea what you're doing. And as you can see, if you go up through good code, you get a little green check mark up in the top right here. So all you have to do really is install this and it's good to go. I like to put it in the sidebar and have it start on boot as well. I also like to auto update most of my add-ins unless there's something that I have to be aware of within configurator. And it has a configuration, but unless you're trying to be really secure about it, you don't really need to worry about these. These are just for limiting access and requiring SSH keys and such. But you're not gonna be exposing this to the internet, so you don't have to really worry about it. The next plugin I recommend is SSH Server. SSH is a secure command line communication platform. This allows you to remotely edit files in Home Assistant through a command line. This is not going to give you root access to the Raspberry Pi or whatever device is hosting Home Assistant, but it's useful in case you mess up something in the Home Assistant configuration, so it is still online, but the browser interface isn't working. So to do this, you're going to need uh, some sort of command line or terminal application. Now in Windows, the regular command line that you run through CMD, that can work, but I like installing something like PuTTY, which is a free command line software because it also has a way to generate SSL keys, which we'll see later on. So go ahead and install it from the add-on store, but you don't want to necessarily turn it on first. You want to go down to the configuration, and this is where you'll be able to add either the authorization key which is what PuTTY will help you generate by running the PuTTY Gen application within it, or you can choose a password. It's recommended that you use an authorization key, especially if you're going to be enabling internet access, but for the purposes of this exercise, I'm just going to use a password. And I used the worst password possible, but I'm going to be changing that. So it's up and running. And if you make any changes to this configuration file, you're gonna to wanna to restart. There's also an option to run it within Home Assistant itself, but unless you really like working with the command line, that's not the most useful thing. So here's my instance of PuTTY. And there's the terminal. You're going to log in as root for whatever reason, even though you don't get root access. And there we go. You run help and you'll get a whole list of commands. I'll go further into this sort of thing later on. This is, you have to know Linux for this sort of thing, um, which isn't that difficult to learn the basic commands, but it's something for a whole other series of videos. You just type exit and that closes it out. Now I want to discuss Mosquito Broker. Mosquito Broker is for working with MQTT. 
MQTT is a lightweight protocol used to facilitate machine-to-machine -machine communications. This makes it ideal for working within an IoT environment. A message broker works to translate messages between devices. Mosquito Broker works within Home Assistant to handle MQTT communications between devices on your network. Now, there's going to be a little configuration to this that we just can't do right now because we don't have any devices to add, but I just want to get it plugged in there and ready to go for when we do. So you want to install it from the add-on store, start the service, wait a few minutes for it, check the logs for any errors. You also see configurations and such here, but these are all for security purposes and if you and these are the ports that it's going to be accessible through. So we already get a warning, but this is in yellow because it's an advisory. It's not actually stopping anything from working. This is just to say I have no SSL security certificates. So if this hits the internet, you're in trouble. And you want to go into configuration, integrations, and it should be automatically discovered. If not, you just go to plus, you do a search for it, there it is. Enable discovery. I don't have any MQTT enabled devices right now, but I will in the future and this will come in handy then. And the last add-on I'm going to talk about is the check home assistant configuration. Now when you open up the supervisor tab, you're going to see if there's any outstanding upgrades to Home Assistant sitting around here. Now let's say you've done a bunch of configurations like I have. What the Check Home Assistant configuration add-on does is it'll compare that to the new version of Home Assistant and make sure there's no conflicts in, or anything's gonna break. And it's a pretty easy and straightforward setup. You just install it from the add-on store, you hit start, Give it a few minutes, it'll take a little while. And once it's up and running, here's the log. Any errors will be in big red letters, so you'll know right away. And that's all there is to that one. And that is how you use the HASIO add-on store and the Home Assistant Community Store to add plugins to improve your Home Assistant instance. I'll be going into other plugins in the future, but let me know if there's any specific ones you want to see or if I missed any important steps. You can leave a comment or you can reach out to me over social media or through email. Don't forget to check out the companion post over at SuburbanNerd.com and while you're there, sign up for the newsletter. You'll get regular updates, exclusive content, and special offers. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is the Suburban Nerd, putting the smart in smart home.